Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by DrFloyd.com. This week, starring Patrick Bristow, Kevin Birdson, Brian Clark, and Michael Ostrom. When we last left Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve, the Translatura had transported them to Athens, Greece in the middle of William Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. So you're telling me that we've been cast as Shakespearean characters who are going to put on a play? Yeah, we're two of the mechanicals. Floyd, you keep on saying mechanicals as if I know what it means. It just means common characters. They aren't kings or other royalty. They're just average working guys. And from the looks of our outfits, I'd say I've been cast as Snout the Tinker, and you've been cast as Snug the Joiner. Well, I know that a tinker works with metal because my dad used to do that. Uh, But what is a joiner? It's a fancy word for a carpenter who installs doors and windows. Look, we gotta get out of here. Put your arm around me and I'll push the button on the Translatura remote control. Not so fast, Floyd. This could be my big chance to be a star. A star? Yes. I've always wanted to act in a play. But you couldn't act your way out of a Hush, Floyd. They're about to announce the parts. Gentlemen, answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the Weaver. (laughs) Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. This was lofty. <laughs> now name the rest of the players. <clears throat> Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith. Let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisney, Thisney. Oh, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy Thisbe dear and lady dear. No, no, no. You must play Pyramus and flute you, Thisbe. <laughs> that guy Flute has to play a girl. Actually, back in those times, all the women's roles were played by men or young boys. Really? Well, I hope I don't have to play a girl. Snug, the joiner? Yes. You, the lion's part. Uh, have you the lion's part written? Uh, pray you, if it be, give it to me, for I am uh, a slow of study. You can say that again. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the Duchess and the ladies that they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. I grant you, friends, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you to uh, any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. <clears throat> Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? Fire, Lakin, a pile of spear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. And I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. And this will put them out of fear. Fine. I will deliver such a prologue. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. You think you're scared now? Wait till you see Dr. Steve's acting. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in, God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your lion living. And we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay. 
You must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he himself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect, Ladies, or <clears throat> fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you, <clears throat> Not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there indeed let him name his name, and tell them plainly he is snug the joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber. For you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine that night we play our play? A calendar! A calendar! Look in the almanac! Find out moonshine! Find out moonshine! Yes, it doth shine that night. Well, then you may leave a casement to the great chamber window where we play, open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern, and say he comes to disfigure, or to present, the person of moonshine. Robin Starveling, let this task fall to you. I shall be the fullest moon the audience has yet seen. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story did talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man, perhaps you, Snout, must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. Let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. Agreed. I shall take on the mantle of wall for our production. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. And as the mechanicals begin to rehearse, we shall take our leave. Will Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve actually go through with playing parts in Pyramus and Thisbe? If they do go through with it, how will their performances be received by the Duke? And just how is Dr. Steve going to prepare for his role as a lion? Are you kidding? Dr. Steve's been a lion all his life. Oh, hilarious. Find out next time on the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Because he tells lies. Episode number 705 of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd starred Patrick Bristow as Peter Quince, Kevin Bernson as Nick Bottom, Brian Clark as Francis Flute, and Michael Ostrom as Robin Starveling. Music for this episode by Jody Whitesides, www.jodywhitesides.com. This episode was written and adapted by Grant Pachoco. Leave us a voicemail at area code 818-332-3053. When in beautiful downtown Burbank, California, visit Dr. Floyd Studios. Episode number 705 of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd is copyright 2008 Dr. Floyd Industries. All rights reserved. Clear the airwaves! Clear the airwaves! It's now time for Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation Ranger's secret message for you members of the Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation. Remember, kids, only official radio adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Rangers can decode Dr. Floyd's secret message with the secret decoder ring available only from www.imaginationranger.com. All right, grab your secret decoder rings and a pencil and paper and prepare to set your imagination to fun. Remember, Dr. Floyd is counting on you. And here is the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Ranger secret message for episode number 705, All the World's a Stage. This is the answer to the trivia question which is posted in the Imagination Nation Ranger forums. 14, 5, 8, 20, 7, 9, 8, Four, twenty-five, seven, twelve, eight, one, one, seven, one, fifteen. And that was a message from Dr. Floyd himself to all his Imagination Nation Rangers. You can join Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation and become an Imagination Nation Ranger only at www.imaginationranger.com. And until next time, set your imagination to fun! (laughs) 
Say, Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd fans, do you have what it takes to accept the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd 2008 Summer Reading Challenge? If you can read 10 books from now until September 5th, 2008, you can earn yourself a nifty Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd prize. The challenge is open to Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd fans of all ages, and all it will cost you is the price of one postage stamp. Surf on over to www.drfloyd.com slash challenge and download and print out the official 2008 Summer Reading Challenge Log. Fill it out as you read your books and then mail it back to Dr. Floyd headquarters. Just a few weeks later, you'll receive a special Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd surprise in the mail. It's just that easy. What are you waiting for? Get over to www.doctorfloyd.com slash challenge Download the reading log and get reading. And always remember to set your imagination to fun. Don't just sit there. You're under strict orders to go to www.perary.com. Hip. Hello, young whippersnappers. Dr. Floyd here. In a recent episode of Dr. Floyd, we traveled back to Shakespearean times. Now, we know that some of you fans out there might not understand Shakespearean language. So we've hired the Royal Shakespearean Academy of Brooklyn to translate these episodes for more modern audiences. Enjoy! It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by DrFloyd.com. This week, starring Patrick Bristow, Kevin Birdson, Brian Clark, and Michael Ostrom. When we last left Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve, the Translatura had transported them to Athens, Greece in the middle of William Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. So you're telling me that we've been cast as Shakespearean characters who are going to put on a play? Yeah, we're two of the mechanicals. Floyd, you keep on saying mechanicals as if I know what it means. It just means common characters. They aren't kings or other royalty. They're just average working guys. And from the looks of our outfits... I'd say I've been cast as Snout the Tinker, and you've been cast as Snug the Joiner. Well, I know that a tinker works with metal because my dad used to do that. Uh, But what is a joiner? It's a fancy word for a carpenter who installs doors and windows. Look, we gotta get out of here. Put your arm around me and I'll push the button on the Translatura remote control. Not so fast, Floyd. This could be my big chance to be a star. A star? Yes. I've always wanted to act in a play. But you couldn't act your way out of a Hush, Floyd. They're about to announce the part. Okay, I'm gonna call roll here. Nick Bottom the Weaver? Yo, what part am I gonna play? You, Nick, are gonna play Pyramus. Who's that? A lover or a fighter? A lover who's so much in love that he offs himself at the end of the play. I'll have to cry then if I'm gonna be believable. If I do it, the audience will be crying their eyes out. I'm gonna moan and wail like they ain't never heard. Oh, that was good. Okay, uh, name the rest of the cast. <clears throat> Francis Flute, the Bella's fixer. Right here, Peter. Flute, you're gonna play Thisbe. Who's Thisbe? A heroic knight in shining armor? No, it's the girl that Pyramus loves. No way, I don't want to play a girl. I'm growing a beard. Yeah, that doesn't matter. You'll wear a mask and you can just speak in a high-pitched voice. Oh, well, well if Thisbe can wear a mask, let me play that part too. I'll first be Pyramus. Um, Disney, Disney. Then I'll go falsetto. I'm right here, Pyramus, my sweetheart. I'm your Thisbe, your one and only. No, no, no. You're going to be Pyramus, and Flute, you're going to be Thisbe. (laughs) That guy Flute has to play a girl. Actually, back in those times, all the women's roles were played by men or young boys. Really? Well, I hope I don't have to play a girl. Snug? Yes? You're going to play the lion. What are the lion's lines? Do you have them written down? If so, you better give them to me, because it takes me a while to memorize things. I'm, uh, I'm not that smart. You can say that again. No, you can just improvise the lines. It's just roaring. Hey! Then let me play the lion, too. I'll roar so good that people will think it's a real lion. I'll roar so good that the duke will say, Roar again! Roar again? Uh, no. You'd roar so loudly that it would just scare the duchess and the ladies so much they would all scream, and then we'd all wind up in jail. You're right. You're right! If I scared the ladies, we'd end up in Sing Sing. But I can do it in such a way that they won't get scared. I'll roar as softly as a bird. No, you're not going to play any other part but Pyramus. Pyramus is the main character. The play is named after him partly, so you'll be Pyramus. Peter Quince. <sighs> what now, Bottom? There's some things in this play that aren't going to be good for a family-friendly show. 
First of all, it says that Pyramus is supposed to stab himself. We can't do that in front of families. What are we gonna do? Yeah, this is a kid show. We can't have anybody dying. Yeah, we should probably leave the killing out. Wait a minute. I have an idea. We can just give a speech before the play starts that says, even though people stab themselves with swords in this play, no one gets hurt. We're just acting. Uh, fine, I'll write up a speech to give before the show starts. A lion is probably too scary for a family-friendly show, too. Hey, I'm scared of the lion, I'll tell you that. You think you're scared now? Wait till you see Dr. Steve's acting. Guys, he's right. You can't just bring a lion into a family-friendly show. Lions are really scary. We, we gotta do something about that. We need another prologue saying that he's not a real lion. That's not good enough. You gotta say the actor's name, and his face has gotta stick out of the costume. And you know what? You gotta have him say something like, Ladies or fair ladies, please don't be scared. I'm not a real lion. I'm just a guy in a lion suit. It's just me, Snug the Joiner. Yeah, okay, fine, but we got another problem. How are we gonna bring Moonlight into the theater? Because it says, Pyramus and Thisbe, they meet by moonlight. Is there a full moon the night of the show? We need a calendar. Look in the calendar, see if there's a full moon. Uh, yes, the moon is full that night. Well, then we'll just open a window in the theater and let the moon shine in. Or we could have someone come in with a lantern and sticks, because the man in the moon supposedly carries sticks with him. And then they can play the moon. Huh? Huh? Robin Stavling, you can be the moon. I'll give him my best shot. There's another problem, though. We need to have a wall in the theater, because according to the script, Pyramus and Thisbe, they talk to each other through a hole in the wall. You can't bring a wall into a theater. What are we going to do, Bottom? Someone, maybe you, Snout, could dress up as a wall. We can put some clay all over you, and you can carry a big rock and be the wall. And, and you can hold your fingers like this, so Pyramus and Thisbe can whisper through it. Fine, I'll be the wall. Great, we're all set. Now let's start rehearsing. And as the mechanicals begin to rehearse, we shall take our leave. Will Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve actually go through with playing parts in Pyramus and Thisbe? If they do go through with it, how will their performances be received by the Duke? And just how is Dr. Steve going to prepare for his role as a lion? Are you kidding? Dr. Steve's been a lion all his life. Oh, hilarious. Find out next time on the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Could you see that was a pun? Like lion and lion. He's a lion like an animal and he's a lion like, you know, he tells lies. You know what I'm saying? Narrator? Hello? Episode number 705T of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd starred Patrick Bristow as Peter Quince. Kevin Burnson as Nick Bottom, Brian Clark as Francis Flute, and Michael Ostrom as Robin Starveling. Music for this episode by Jody Whitesides, www.jodywhitesides.com. This episode was adapted and written by Grant Pachoco. Leave us a voicemail at area code 818-332-3053. Visit the brand new Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd merchandise store at www.drfloyd.com slash store. This episode was recorded at Dr. Floyd Studios in beautiful downtown Burbank, California. Episode number 705T of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd is copyright 2008 Dr. Floyd Industries. All rights reserved. Clear the airwaves! Clear the airwaves! It's now time for Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation Rangers secret message for you members of the Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation. Remember kids, only official radio adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Rangers can decode Dr. Floyd's secret message with the secret decoder ring available only from www.imaginationranger.com. Alright, grab your secret decoder rings and a pencil and paper and prepare to set your imagination to fun. Remember, Dr. Floyd is counting on you. And here is the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Ranger secret message for episode number 705T, the translated version of All the World's a Stage. 2, 15, 7, 12, 14, 8, 17, 3, 20, 14, 8, 4, 18, 17, 5, 18, 15, 7, 2, 17, 
16, 23, 3, 25, 15. And that was a message from Dr. Floyd himself to all his Imagination Nation Rangers. You can join Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation and become an Imagination Nation Ranger only at www.imaginationranger.com. And until next time, set your imagination to fun. <laughs> Say, Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd fans, do you have what it takes to accept the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd 2008 Summer Reading Challenge? If you can read 10 books from now until September 5th, 2008, you can earn yourself a nifty Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd prize. The challenge is open to Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd fans of all ages, and all it will cost you is the price of one postage stamp. Surf on over to www.drfloyd.com slash challenge and download and print out the official 2008 Summer Reading Challenge Log. Fill it out as you read your books and then mail it back to Dr. Floyd headquarters. Just a few weeks later, you'll receive a special Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd surprise in the mail. It's just that easy. What are you waiting for? Get over to www.doctorfloyd.com slash challenge Download the reading log and get reading. And always remember to set your imagination to fun. Don't just sit there. You're under strict orders to go to www.parary.com. Hip. Ah, Saturday Story Circle in the Mutual Audio Network. A time for the family to gather together and enjoy tales filled with adventure, humor, and fun. Speaking of family-friendly, have you listened to Bells in the Bathroom? Catch it on Friday Follies and every other week on Sunday Showcase. It's a time for the family to gather together and enjoy tales filled with stinky puns, odd characters, and bizarre plots such as they are. Bells in the Bathroom on the Mutual Audio Network. It will have your family going around in circles.